the moment of truth, whether the sliding doors fit or not. Usual story in this boat. Oh, that one's fallen apart as well. We're attempting to stay motivated and carry on uh, getting on with all these jobs. It's a really busy life for Pepe. He's thoroughly involved in the refit. Yeah. Sliding. Sliding all the way. Oh yes. Right, well, that's 10 out of 10. Ah, voila. Sheet bags on. Tick. Well done, babe. It's a beer o'clock, yeah. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. They say that uh, boating is really just a series of maintenance in exotic locations and I'll just give you a little look at today's exotic location. So this is Sid Harbour. It's very calm. It's a really good anchorage when the wind's blowing. It was meant to come up south southeast about 15 to 20 this morning it hasn't really done that and then it was going to drop back off anyway and just around the corner from where i'm pointing the camera right now they're currently filming a hollywood blockbuster a romantic comedy starring george clooney and julia roberts called ticket to paradise josh is having a pajama day as usual, aren't you? <laughs> not on a school day. No, it's not a school day, it's a weekend. As you can see, the cat is just flat out like a lizard drinking. It's a really busy life for Pepe. He's thoroughly involved in the refit. Aren't you, Peps? <laughs> that piece of wood that he's got his cheek wedged onto must be just so comfortable. <laughs> Well, it's a beautiful day here in the Whitsundays. We're out in uh, Sid Harbour and we're attempting to stay motivated and carry on uh, getting on with all these jobs. So obviously there's a, a list of things still to be done um, on the refit and there are some things where we had to sort of take a pause and there's been a bit of varnish that needed some maintenance um, because it was a year ago now that we started so we've had to get some more coats on and um, there's still a couple of repairs to be done on one of the aft port lights which Julian's been doing today I'll just show you that in a minute and um, we've just taken delivery of uh, some new sheet bags for our cockpit so after putting the old sheet bags back on we decided that it really was time to replace them and we got Ullman Sales to make us some new ones and uh, they're really quite clever I'm just going to show you what they look like so these are the new sheet bags and uh, they've got a, a fiberglass button running along the back edge here and the, the front edge actually which we can drill into there's a definite back edge the fabric's a bit different on the back and they've got this nice draining mesh at the bottom so no water can collect in there and um, the sheets won't go mouldy. So Julian's just getting his tools out all over again after doing the port lights and right. we'll be ready to go again, won't we? Yep. I'll just show you the port light. So this is um, the last port light that needed to be repaired. This one was actually sealed previously, um, so it doesn't have to come off. Julian did try to get it off some time ago when he was doing all the other ones and, and it, it actually wouldn't come off. Um, so what he's done this morning is uh, cut some plugs, teak plugs for the holes, re-plugged them. There's epoxy here going off. Once that's gone off, he will, um, just chisel these off so they're flush and then we can strip and sand all this back and then I'll get ready to give it all its uh, various coats of varnish. So we've got a, um, a fiberglass sail batten in here which uh, holds this up and another one here and uh, 
fiberglass being so hard grabs the drill. We had to do it in three stages. So you gotta put a really small drill bit through first and that also pushes a hole through the fabric without without like ripping it up. And, um, and then a slightly bigger one and then the final screw to go through it. And that avoids, um, stops the, the batten from splitting or something horrible like that that can happen if you're trying to drill it all in one go. So uh, just takes a bit of time, but it's that's worth the way it, it is. It's yeah. got, it's got yeah. to be done properly. That's right. Now for the messy bit, sticking them in and sealing them. Voila, look, that's the first one on. All right, I'll just put the, um, put the sheet, sheet in into it. it, demonstrate how it works. If they ever pop off because we've been too rough with it, just put a big screw in. There you go. Oh, thanks for your help, Pepe. Thanks for your help, Josh. <laughs> Sheet bags on. Tick. What well up, babe? It's a beer o'clock, yeah. sliding doors to make. The old ones are in various stages of um, decomposition. These are the locker doors. They're quite simple. I'm just going to copy them but um, they run in a slot side to side. These are the little ones. A couple of these bigger ones under the sink. Usual story in this boat. The laminated plywood so Going in the bin. If you've got access to a um, table saw, this job's really easy. If you don't have one, there's also a really easy way of doing it. Just show you how. Okay, so we've got two of these, exactly the same. Oh, that one's falling apart as well. We've got a nice uh, Makita power saw with a fine tooth uh, blade, lots of teeth on it, so it should cut with very little chicken. Okay, so I've got a piece of scrap plywood on the table here, nice and flat. I've screwed a nice straight piece of tassie oak as a fence. That's like a datum if you like. And then I'm gonna bring my piece of plywood in, which I know has a, has a very straight edge. That's gonna be one of my edges. Bring that in. Push that against the straight edge. I'll even put a screw in the other side of the plywood. Not into the plywood, because then I won't be able to use that bit, just on the other side of the ply to push it. Keep, keep this piece of ply pushed up hard against the edge there. And then bring my um, piece of plywood that I want to copy. Uh, where's the next bit? The next bit is... I've got a few holes here that are the same dimension. So I'll push my um, piece on copy up against the fence, make a little mark. Up this side, make another mark. That's where I want my cut line to go, where that mark is. However, this power saw fence. Makita makes it this way. It is 100 millimeters away from the, the from the um, the side of the, the base plate of the uh, power saw. So I'm going to use that edge against my straight edge. 
so I need to know how far away the blade is from the straight edge, the offset. So it's about 101. So that line that I just did there, which was the, the actual um, width that I want the door, I have to measure another 101 mil away from that. I'll get onto the fly. Same over this side. That's where I'm going to set my my guide. I've got another piece of um, straight timber. Like that. Right on those two marks where I drew my offset to. Couple of screws. piece of ply I've got underneath is only half an inch so I don't want to strip the screws out so I just do them by hand. Okay so that's ready to run the saw. These little Makitas are great little vacuum takeoff so you can save most of the dust in your vacuum cleaner. So here it is again there's my straight edge that I screwed down to the bench. Here's my piece of plywood that I pushed up against the with a good edge up against the fence. There's a screw that I've put in the back there to make sure the plywood doesn't move at all while I'm cutting. This is my fence which I've offset 101 mils away from where I want the saw blade to actually go. Okay. Exactly the same. Now that's ready, I'll do exactly the same thing. Turn it around this way, measure the width, use the same thing, the fence, cut all these off at the same. It's just a repeat of the process. Do exactly the same within a mill. Next stage is to route the edges away that fit um, in the slots with we'll the router and a jig. Set the router bit so it's going to cut basically 5mm in from the edge of the plywood and 5mm deep. This is just a test piece, I'm just going to do a test, make sure it's going to give me what I want. Just cleaned up the edge there. 5mm deep, 5mm in, which is the same as uh, the crappy old one I've got here. So I'm going to do that on all of them. I can do them all on the same setting. Once I've made them to this stage, I'm going to take them all down to the boat and make sure that they actually fit. The next step is to uh, put the finger pulls in. So I'm going to put them in exactly the same place as, I, as the old ones. But instead of being timber, they're going to be a stainless steel finger pull from Bunnings, which should look apart. I've got a hole saw which looks like it's the, the right size and I'm just going to drill a test hole in a scrap piece of ply just to make sure it is. Now I know that this, uh, this hole saw looks slightly undersized for this to go in so what I did while I was drilling it was I just moved the drill around like this while I'm drilling and it just gives you an extra half a mil or so um, clearance if you need it. Done that. Clean up these edges, the coarse sandpaper, the is going to have uh, laminex both sides and that's going to just go, there you go, that's a nice fit in there. The moment of truth, whether the sliding doors fit or not. I've got the wrong size on. <laughs> Let me sweat. That's an upright one, so that goes over there. Sliding all the way. Oh yes. These four are all the same size. Are they? Mm. Right, well that's ten out of ten. Look at that. Look at that. Voila!